What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mike Sieben and in today's video, we're gonna be talking managing your inventory when selling on Amazon FBA. Let's get into it. All right guys, so if you love my channel and my content, do not forget to smash that like button. Now without that out of the way, let's get into today's video. All right, so this is video number seven in the how to sell on Amazon for beginners series that I'm currently doing here on my channel. Last video, we went over cash flow and how to deal with your cash flow while running an Amazon business. And then in today's video, we're gonna be talking about managing your inventory. And I'm gonna break that down into to two essential sections. First is gonna be talking about how to manage inventory to actually manage and run your business. And the second part is going to be managing your inventory when talking about Amazon's restrictions and storage limits. So this is specifically related to Amazon FBA. Generally speaking, when you're running an Amazon wholesale business, you want to be going after suppliers or brands that can give you inventory time and time again. So the benefit of this is is going to be that every single time you run out of a product, if it's a product that's doing really well and you see it doing well in the future, you can actually do inventory planning. You know, you can start buying as you grow and scale and you get comfortable with products, one to three months worth of inventory at any given time. This is gonna obviously help you out with volume discounts and creating a relationship with your supplier and all of those kinds of things. But then too, it gives you some certainty in knowing that you're not gonna stock out of products on your listing and you always have have either more product on the way or lots of product in Amazon warehouses. And as long as this is product that sells through, Amazon is more than happy to store, you know, a month or two worth of inventory in their warehouses for you and on be your behalf. Because we're always dealing with suppliers or brands that are able to replenish the inventory, we're able to plan and track. And so we're always paying attention to, you know, the profits that we're making and how the inventory is performing. But then on the back end, we're making sure to work with our supplier and have the inventory ready and say, look, we're looking for this, this, and this item. You know, these are the quantities, kind of working to make sure that that's all ready and good to go for when you need to make your next order and your next shipment. Because one of the worst things is a really good selling product. You have the opportunity to order it. You know, it's not discontinued and it's just a matter of, you know, getting all of the logistics lined up and you stock out. You run out of inventory, you have absolutely absolute killer product that's making you hundreds or thousands of dollars a month and it stocks out. There's nothing worse than losing that buy box, getting another seller in, and then it becomes that much more difficult and a big loss to your company to get the products back in. You're waiting on Amazon, et cetera, et cetera. So make sure you are paying attention to your inventory. You're looking at every single listing you have at least on a weekly basis and make sure that your good selling products that are making you margin always either on back order or you have some on the way and you're making sure to get those in and paying attention to things like receiving times and all of that good stuff to ensure that you don't stock out on product. The other side of this is talking about Amazon restrictions. So Amazon always has a number of restrictions. Kind of the biggest things right now as we're moving into the fourth quarter, they have created something called an IPI index or an inventory performance index and it's essentially assigns you a number. So this IPI score is based on four main factors and that is going to be your excess inventory, your sell through rate, your stranded inventory and in stock inventory. Excess inventory is obviously you want extra inventory available so you will never stock out. The better that that performance is, the higher score you get in that category. The sell through rate is obviously talking about how well your product actually sells through and is able to move, you know, on a monthly basis your stranded inventory, there can be a number of reasons why your inventory can be stranded. Amazon thinks that your price is too high or too low. If a listing gets closed down, if they're asking for more information on a listing, you maybe you need to provide some documents or something like that, your inventory will go stranded. So make sure you're always monitoring that and clearing out that stranded inventory, whether you need to return it to yourself or you're able to you know, rectify the problem with Amazon and get that inventory back up and listed. And then in stock inventory, Inventory just talks about how much inventory you actually have in stock per listing. That kind of blends, you know, the metrics there's lap over and the things that you need to do to get there. 
but they are pretty self-explanatory and Amazon does have breakdowns and they actually have suggestions on how you can get that up. So essentially maintaining a good score coming into Q4, there was a deadline, I believe it was August 16th in of this year that basically said, if your IPI score is not over 500, you have storage limits. So this is limits on your regular storage, your oversized storage, your aerosol storage, and any other hazmat inventory that you have. You now have a storage limit that you have to stay within in Q4. So you have to be very mindful of all of the products that you're sending in, not to exceed that storage limit because your shipping privileges will be suspended until you get under that, as well as there are additional fees for going over this limit. So that would be all talking about the first restriction, which is inventory restriction. The second restriction is ASIN specific inventory restrictions. So right now Amazon has put in place because of their lack of warehouse space and warehouse, they're limiting each ASIN specifically to your account. And this limit is based on how you have sold the product in the past. So say this is a product that you've had for, you know, six months, you sell a thousand of them per month. They're going to likely give you a inventory threshold that is a much higher than a product that you're just bringing on for the first time and you're just trialing for the very first time as of September 29th when I'm filming this video of 2020 if you have never listed a product before and you're trying to list it for the first time your ASIN specific limit is as far as I've seen 200 units so this means you can send in 200 units of any given time and then as you sell through it based on the sales velocity Amazon will allow you to send more and more so that is another consideration you want to make sure leading up to these most busiest times of the year in November, December, deep into the fourth quarter, that if there's products that you wanna be sending in multiple hundreds or thousands of, that you need to get on there now and start selling. All right, guys, so I've been over a couple of the different issues that may come up with tracking and managing inventory, both from a business and cash flow perspective, as well as an Amazon restriction perspective. And I hope that these tips and tricks have kind of helped you, and at least I've shed some light on the different areas Areas that you need to be paying attention to. Please let me know down in the comment section what you'd like to see going forward to finish off this series, as well as any other video ideas that you'd like me to talk about. If you have questions or comments about managing your inventory, please let me know down there as well. Also, please do not forget to smash the like button. That helps out the YouTube algorithm. Also, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell. That'll let you know every single time I make a new video. I appreciate all of your guys' support and help on growing this channel. Other than that, that's all I have for you guys today. Take care.